joined by Devin Powell and his uh, his friend over here. Uh, what's his name? Who who are we with here tonight? This is Gunner. Gunner. Stunt gun. Gunner Nelson, actually. Gunner it's Nelson. Uh, yep. and, uh, and and obviously, uh, Devin's got a big fight coming up here at UFC on Fox 30 on July 28th. He's going to be taking on Alvaro Herrera. Devin, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Just uh, finally back from a real long day of training double sessions, getting a photo shoot uh, in, in the middle, and uh, finally back to relax by the pond and call it a night. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you having me part of your uh, post-day uh, plans. Uh, it's good to talk to you again. And uh, I got to ask, when did you find out about this fight? Because this kind of came out of nowhere, and this uh, th- this matchup's coming up here on the 28th. Yeah, it's uh, real quick. I think, uh, I honestly don't know how it surfaced exactly. So the guy that's kind of helped me with management, first-round management, um, he called me uh, about, I think it was last Wednesday, so like a little under 30 days um from the night of the fight and he just asked me if i'd fight alvaro herrera july 28th and i was like yeah 100 percent he's like do you want to know anything about him i was like nope tell him yes so he's like all right i need to go i gotta call sean shelby back so he called sean told him i'm in and then he called me back and just said uh as long as they accept it you know we're a go so a couple days later we got the the uh the green light saying that he accepted contracts get signed from there and then we were we we're golden so it, it came up real quick. I think that they were trying to find him a fight. I don't think he was on the card, though. Um, so I don't think that he had, like, an opponent pull out from injury. I just think that they're trying to get him his, his fourth fight in his contract, maybe. And, you know, uh, they just were able to find somebody that was willing to take it, which was me. Good stuff, man. Well, uh, is this your uh, first time uh, heading over to Canada, or you've been there, out in uh, Canada before? Been there, never fought there, so I'm super excited. We're gonna go to Banff after. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's great. So where 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 had you been before in Canada? Um, so we uh, my whole family lives on my mom's side in Elgash, Maine, which is about eight hours up. Um, and uh, so they're right on the border. So in Fort Kent, Maine, you can go across the border right into Canada. I'm not exactly sure what the um the town is, but like probably thirty mile or. 30 minutes from there, there's a place that I would go train called Edmonston Jiu-Jitsu or BJJ. Really cool guys there, but I think the town was Edmonston. So, but it was right, right on the border of Maine by uh, okay. Fort Kent and Elgash and stuff. But okay. it's not close to this at all. This would be no, from no. Of course, this is in, uh, the, drive. <laughs> I, I was gonna say. Uh, so, so this fight's in Calgary. Did you know anything about Calgary before you took this fight? No, I just know that it's supposed to be beautiful. So I'm super excited. Yeah, it's like the Texas of Canada. Like it's got uh, you oh, know, it's yeah. like oil country, and there you know there's a lot of like cowboys and stuff. Uh, they, they do like the stampede during the summer and everything. So it's uh, it's kind of interesting. It's like a you know very western part of Canada. So I'm yeah, Canadian. Yeah. That's I got I got to fill you in on a few of these things. So oh that's yeah, important. I, I heard they got like great steak and stuff. I don't really eat meat unless it's wild game for my family, but. Oh, they'll have, they'll have plenty of that over there in Calgary. You'll, you'll get a good steak, I'm sure, after the fight, so that's great. Um, it's been a while since you've seen you in the cage, man. Of course, uh, June uh, 2017 was the last time you fought. Uh, what's been the reason for the layoff? Uh, you know, honestly, I didn't want to have a layoff. Uh, I did have a surgery, which obviously held me back. But other than that, it was it's just been a, uh, a big headache trying to get my next fight. I've, off, I've been offered two fights on short notice that I've accepted both, and they didn't end up happening. I accepted a fight in Poland with three weeks' notice against Marcin Held. Um, he ended up taking somebody else after, like, us waiting, like, probably a full week training, hoping that he would take it, and then he just took something else. Um, and then I, a month after my last surgery, uh, I was just getting back to training, and Evan, Bun- uh, Evan Dunham's opponent pulled out from probably, I think it was injury, or a visa issue maybe. Um, but uh, he pulled out, and I... I put my name in the hat trying to fight him with 30 days notice on that one too, fresh off the surgery. Um, just because I'm just trying to basically take anything because, uh, I just, it's, it's hard in the position I'm in to really do anything, but say yes to everything and anything. Sean Shelby was very blunt as far as saying that they didn't know if they could find me another fight. I'm in the most stacked division. It's, uh, it's difficult. So all I do is train six days a week tag them and everything that I say and just hope for the best. But we were really looking at, we were in a position where we might have to go back to local leagues, which I wasn't going to do. I was just going to, just going to train every single day, do my best tag every day. And then if it ended up being the case, then, you know, we'd probably look at, um, calling it a, a career. 
Really? Okay. We we'll get this next one. Yeah. yeah no. No. Just, no. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Uh, it's just uh, I've been training real hard and fighting pretty much since I started training. Uh, so it's been like probably start fighting nine years ago. Started training like eleven years ago. Every every uh, session, I you know I go real hard and uh, it's just been a long time doing it. And um, I'm not I'm not really willing to go back to the the lower leagues when I get a six year old and the the trauma that I put my body and my brain through. So at the top of the the mountain, I'm gonna train and, and fight as hard as I can whenever the day comes that I have to, uh, you know, call it quits from that. That's going to be the end of the career. And I'm, I've come to terms with that. You know, I'm, I'm super excited for this fight. I fought for it. And I deserve it. Um, and I'm, I'm ready for it. And I know I can win this fight. And I just got to go out there and be the best and uh, give everything that I haven't shown yet because there's a lot more to me. And a lot of people have seen it, just not quite in the, the UFC cage yet. I think this is a perfect matchup, even though it's on short notice. It's uh, it's it's going to be a good night. So, just happy to get back in that cage. Oh, I bet. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, first off, you said you had some surgery. What what were the surgeries, and how long was the recovery time? Uh, so, uh, my buddy uh, Joe Lozon actually, I was rolling with him, um, and. Uh, he was trying to pass my guard and I wasn't wearing my diamond cup and he actually ruptured. I remember my this. I remember, I remember reading about this. I you yeah. totally just reminded me as soon as you said Joe Lozon, cause I remember hearing about this. We don't need to go into too much detail on that one, but uh, man, that I, I can imagine that would take you out for a bit. Yeah. You know, it was wild. It was uh, the injury happened and I was in agony and I, I, I kind of just brushed it aside. Like it didn't feel normal. It felt like I had a unicorn horn growing out of myself. Um, <laughs> and I just, uh, I just kind of assumed that it was something that, uh, you know, anybody that get hit there, you're going to be in a lot of pain. It's a sens sensitive area, a lot of nerves. Uh, so I kind of just pushed it aside. I waited a day and a half, and then I finally was seen. And then I, I had an ultrasound, um, and then they're like, yeah, what have you had to eat or drink? And I found out, like, all right, the second they say that, you know you're going in for surgery. So I took a quick picture of uh, me with the, the ambulance drivers who were going to rush me to the hospital to have emergency surgery. And then I posted it and wrote a little funny, like, uh, tweet or uh, Instagram post, and it ended up blowing up. And Ariel Hawani interviewed me, TMZ, Barstool Sports, uh, Jim Rome. So made the best out of the situation. And I honestly think that that kind of publicity helped me get this third fight as well. You know? <laughs> there you go. I mean, it's yeah. almost like it's better than if I were to have, just like maybe broken my arm or something, you know? Which right. It's, it's not as catchy, too. not as, uh, yeah, not, exactly. not as headline grabbing, right? So, yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's interesting. Now, now you talk a little bit there about, you know, not getting fights and, you know, potential retirement. So regardless of what happens in this fight, like, are you, are you thinking of retirement fairly soon? Or if you win this fight, does that sort of change your perspective on how your career is going to go? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's entirely as much as I love fighting. I know that the damage is something that accumulates and it gets harder and harder to get through these fight camps. But the financial gains of uh, of the UFC fights, the pen, potential fifty thousand dollar bonuses, you know, fighting for, I mean, a loss in the UFC is only at the beginning levels only a ten thousand dollar payday with paying for probably most people got about five flights. The UFC covers a couple of them, then you have to cover the rest, and then all your, you know, there's a lot of expenses that go into it. So you usually walk away if you lose a fight at the beginner level. Or the, the base level UFC fight, like seven grand. That's a lot of money just like as a fighter that, that comes from the like the local leagues, but it's still, it's not that much, you know, especially when you're looking at, I fought twice, um, lost the decision, and I lost a really close split where I doubled my opponent's punch count, but that doesn't matter at the end of the day, you know. So 13 months, what I've gotten paid from the UFC was two, two checks for $10,000 that you subtract the all the medical bills um like the pre-fight medicals they pay for them but they take them out of your purse so like the cat scan the ekg the blood work eyes um all that all the extra tickets um for the uh like plane tickets that i couldn't pay for they take it out of my purse so if you don't win your fights man you're like you don't get too much and then you you look at the local leagues you're getting scraps in comparison to that which still doesn't feel like a lot it's like I gotta win this fight, you know. I need that. I need that twenty thousand. Then I'm I'm fighting to get that bonus, man. I'm I'm gonna do everything I can to to get that fifty thousand. Because if I get that, it's a whole life changer. 
take us out of any debts, you know, take care of my family. It's just that that's the reason that if if I fight and win, which is 100 percent the goal and I believe my, in myself that I can make it happen, that I'll go and I'll get that fourth fight and try and do the exact same thing. Continue to take care of my family. If I win a couple bonuses, I can pay my house off. You know, it's like yeah. big difference between going and fighting as much as I love the promoters in the local leagues, how much like NEF has done for me. It's it's my teammates' time for them, you know. Right. They deserve to fight in the local leagues and prove themselves, which they're they're so talented and they're young and up and coming, and they'll build themselves up, and then I'll corner them in the UFC, you know. Maybe take a pay cut from them. Okay, I like it. <laughs> um, Fine now. You talked a little bit about training camp there. Who have been some of your main training partners for this fight? Um, so I go to Lozon's every Monday, which is great. He's cornering me for this fight, so that that's been awesome. Um, and then I have a bunch of local guys that uh, train at my academy. Um, we got like uh, they're they're up and comers, but like Ross Danner, phenomenal state champ wrestler, who's a who's a fighter as well. One of the I think he has one of the bi- uh, brightest futures around. Um, he's just still uh, relatively new as far as experience in fighting, but one of the hardest training partners to have. Another guy who hasn't even fought yet, who can I think he can compete with a lot of the UFC guys. He's phenomenal. This, uh, his name's Jamie Sprague. Um, Killian Murphy just challenged for the NAF title um, at 35. Uh, he's a, another great state champ wrestler. Zach Murphy, another great state champ wrestler. We get a lot of good wrestlers. Um, we've got uh, Zach Murphy. <laughs> Sorry. That was killing. I just trained too much. My brain isn't working. No, no, no worries. No, you, you, you said a lot of good names there. And I, the thing I yeah, liked yeah, is like, you talked about some up-and-comers, so that's always good. We can keep an eye out for them. Yeah, keep an eye out for Zach Lawrence, too. He's a 170. He had a seven-second knockout his last fight. Uh, grew up playing hockey. Um, he's a strength and conditioning coach, and he loves Muay Thai. He loves MMA. He's a blue belt now, and uh, he's just crazy athlete. And he's the kind of guy that, like, you're afraid if he's willing to put in the work because he's just already so so athletic and so talented. So And he puts in all the work. He's there every single day. He has a fight in September, and he hurt his hand in his last fight. But the day after the fight, pretty much, he's back to the gym. So bright future for that kid. So, yeah, we, we got a lot of great guys at our academy. And then Port City BJJ, those guys always support me. That's who I have my black belt under. So they'll come train. And then guys from, like, Young's MMA, like, uh, Aaron Lacey was a great fighter. He'll come down, train with me. Matt Proven comes down, phenomenal Muay Thai. He's from Jesse Erickson's gym, CMBJJ. Jesse Erickson's a great friend of mine. He comes down to train. So a lot of good cross training, great fighters at my gym. Um, and then training with Joe every Monday is awesome. You know, getting the cross training. They have great students as well. Super packed mats. So that's uh, that's kind of been the the general gist. So how do you see this fight playing out on July 28th? I see it. Uh, you know, I, I think that he's going to want to stand and bang. I feel like that's definitely going to be the case, and I think he's going to be surprised being on his feet with me. Uh, and a lot of a lot of people underestimate uh, underestimate my striking because I have a lot of submissions, but usually I knock people down and then submit them. So I think he's going to stand with me, and then he's going to end up clenching with me. We'll end up hitting the mat, you know, and then he'll either. Uh, leave some openings for, for me to get the TKO or he'll give me a, uh, his neck and get the job done. What's but, your men- I was going to say, what's your mentality going into this fight with the fact, you know, I mean, you're 0-2 in the UFC, you need to win this fight, but at the same time, I think you've kind of, you know, looked at sort of the big picture here. In some ways, it's almost freeing knowing that, you know, you can just go out there and give it your all uh, one last shot if this is the last one and kind of not have to have that pressure. Yeah, you know, I had that heartbreak uh, of being told that, it was it, you know, like Sean Shelby's saying, uh, we don't think we'll get you that next fight. You know, it's it's too tough. We're trying to be honest with everyone, but we just have too many people in the division. And I just called them on the cell, you know, left a voicemail, emailed them, just said I, I couldn't uh, look at my family in the eyes or look at myself in the mirror if I didn't give every single effort I, I could to get that next fight. I don't care. I literally told him, I said, I don't care if you shelf me for a year. I'll keep training, let the division thin out. I'll be there waiting. I'll take any short notice fight. Just keep me on the roster. And like, I don't know how, it's just, I didn't have any communication with anyone, but people kept getting cut. I stayed on the roster. I was still getting tested by USADA. And uh, I, it was just like this weird, crazy thing, you know? And it was like I was slipping through the cracks. I went and trained at the PI and uh, I went to probably five or six different UFC events where they gave me and friends and family tickets to go see them. And uh, I just, 
I feel like I already experienced that heartbreak and then I just kind of wouldn't accept it. And now it's just like, I got that next shot, you know, like this is what I wanted. I got it. Just go out and, and just fight, you know, just do what you do. Have fun because at the end of the day, this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. So you better go out there and just do it. Don't, don't hold back, go out on your shield, you know, go take care of, uh, go take care of Herrera and get paid. Well, it's going to be an awesome fight. It's coming up here on July 28th. It's UFC on Fox 30. Uh, Devin, it was uh, great catching up with you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. Yeah. uh, So Twitter, I think it's Devin Powell MMA, I think. Um, (laughs) Instagram, Devin Powell, Nostos MMA. And then on Facebook, I think I have 5,000 friends, which I think is the limit. Um, But you can try and find me. I have to delete a lot of weirdos here and there. So always openings. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely have a lot of sponsors uh, for this fight, which has been awesome. Um, like Dan Kelly from Venom Inc., uh, my tattoo artist. He's hooking me up big time. Probably the best artist around. I, I just think he's incredible. Um, uh, then I got SJ Kelly, um, which is uh, another sponsor, Green Gold. Um, uh, Sakosha Electric, I think. Great electrician. It's taking care of me. Ruderman Septic, uh, My Mobile, uh, Willowbrook Farm, Sea Dog, The Juicery, um, my buddy Tom. Uh, I I don't even know. This dude sponsors me. He's amazing. And I don't even know what the initials stand for, but it's TDM-CG. I think it might okay. be his, his Coast Guard, uh, like his division or something. Um, Chucky's Fight, helping knock out substance abuse. Best Charles, Charles Rose's uh, foundation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah best thing in the world um so that uh the coffee joint um i think that that might be about it right now uh at um at uh what's it uh, at wing it's in dover they're gonna view my fight so people that are around this area go watch it you wear my uh my gear or nostos gear you get 10 percent off i think um and then other other than that belknap dental is always awesome they hook us up with mouthpieces discounted for the fighters they hooked me up with mine um and then two home cooks has always had our back they get uh, the best breakfast around glad i didn't hit a gym carry on that flyer <laughs> <our style. laughs> um but yeah it's probably i mean there's there's a million companies that support me so i apologize if you missed any and i also probably just took up too much time saying all those but for this fight those guys definitely hooked me up so very appreciative What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.